Hello, Geekon. How are you after the party? I see quite well, so we can start. I am Maciek. And I am Tomek. And today we'll be talking about Vertex and Rx Java. Uh, so, quick hands up before we start. How many people heard about Vertex already? Nice. And oh. how many of you played with Vertex? Okay. And how many people heard about reactive extensions such as RxJava, RxJS, RxScala? Wow, excellent. Yeah. Thank you. We work at Cognified and we create dig digital platforms for such companies as Virgin Media, Telegraph and other big players. And you know those brands and you probably know how much traffic their web pages take. <coughs> so let's be precise. It's often more than 300 page views per second, in peak more than 1,000. So it gives us 750 billion requests in month. And uh, tell me, what do you do uh, when the page you just entered is not available within a few seconds? Uh, I must admit that I just closed the tab and opened the, ne the next leaks from Google. And I think I'm not the only person who does that. Uh, Let's now see what's inside this page. Yeah, on this page you can see at least four dynamic components. All behind all those components we've got separate services. So from the beginning we've got user box, we've got search, uh, we've got a dynamic article list, and we've got uh, online chat. Yeah. And behind each of these components is separate backend back service. But backend service is not all, because we create digital platforms so the layout of a page is managed by business people. And all components we create, such as a search or article list, needs to be compatible with each other and work in any, every combination. But what if we will tell you that we are able to sell fully dynamic pages within less than 50 milliseconds? Yeah. So you saw this, p this page before. We've got a lot of different dynamic components and we are able to combine them within less than 50 milliseconds. And we are able to do it with one small server. Yeah. So let's start our story. OK. So maybe from the beginning, uh, we need real case examples. So we've got a client. He's one of the biggest perfume cosmetics retailer in Europe. They've got quite impressive number of stores and outlets. They've got about more than three stores in Krakow, so they're quite big. And uh, remember, they yeah. came to us and they said that they need to rebuild an online shopping platform. And uh, now, the, the, the previous platform, when they wanted to add something new or change the page, it took days, even weeks. So the main goal is to minimize this time when the they business is able to introduce changes. Yes, yeah, so it li sounds like they need content management system, right? Yeah, right. But it's something more. They've got different services which we need to connect them together. They've got core product feeds. They've got a lot of uh, different modules connected with payments, shipments, and much, much more user data. Uh, so our goal is to connect them. Uh, they need to work as one organism. Sounds like a lot of integrations. Yeah, exactly. But I must tell you something. You probably remember. When we've got the discovery yeah. session, our client said that they plan to exchange their core, pl core platform, core product feeds in next year. So we need to think yeah. about that and uh, we need to plan it. Yes. And there is one more thing you probably remember. Uh, it's connected with platform load. Yeah, I remember. They plan to invest in marketing, so the number of visitors of a page will grow in the next years. Exactly. OK, uh, so probably all of you have similar problems and challenges with your, in your work. So let's see now how we can deal with them. And let's start with a traditional approach when the center of the whole system is a CMS. And uh, there are a couple of good reasons one, why we can use a CMS as an integration endpoint. So first of all, is because since all the requests are already handled by CMS, it seems a natural candidate to, to be a center of the system. Also, uh, <coughs> uh, there is a bad, bad side of using a CMS as a core platform. So first of all, we need to remember about scalability and uh, licensing restrictions. And second of all, when we change uh, the 
code, code base of the CMS, we risk a huge problems in the future with, uh, with upgrades. Uh, Tomek, so let's see a uh, client-side approach now. Yeah, personally, I don't like this CMS approach. It's a CMS-driven approach, we call it. Uh, I believe that CMS should be responsible for the content, not for the data. And data yeah. should be served directly from services, and we shouldn't use CMS to process this data. I agree. So uh, it's natural that we move from backend back integration to front-end integration. So from now, our implement implementation looks quite easy, but we need to define web API, which will not change because we'll implement the front-end stuff. And uh, we need to remember that we can easily affect our client visitors' uh, experience. So the page could load quite long, uh, so some components can blink. So it's, it's quite hard to implement good front-end integration. Yeah, I, I think we missed one, one, th one thing. Our client has n not exposed uh, services and we cannot show yeah. them outside. So we still need some kind of backend integration to use the data from them. Exactly. Okay, let's stop and think for a moment. If we could only have the solution that connects both pros of client side and backend integration, discarding or at least limiting their cons, what exactly do we want it to be? Let's call it, call it modern approach for now. And first of all, we need to remember about scalability. Our platform should grow together with our clients' needs. Second of all, uh, our approach cannot be the slowest part of the system, right? So we need to take care of high efficiency. Also, when we create another project, we cannot recreate this solution from the scratch and we need to implement it in so way uh, so that it's extensible enough to reuse it across different platforms. And the last thing about changing the components. It should be pretty easy to achieve if we define each system component responsibility and it's small and well defined. Okay, so we, we know what we want to achieve. Uh, so let's start our design session. We've got a plenty of design sessions before this, this conference, of course, uh, before we created our integration layer. Uh, it is one of them. Uh, you can see at this picture our core team. Yeah, and the third member is Marcin. He's probably right now moving him and his family near Poznań. So can, he can be with us today. But let's go to the main topic. So we finished our thoughts that we should have well-defined components and their responsibilities. So maybe, maybe we need a dedicated solution for integrating each system components instead of bending another part of a system like CMS to do it for us. Let's call it an integration layer. And I think we are in a good place to finally start some coding. Yeah, and that's how Adventure began. Uh, it was a rainy day, great day to create something special. And in our company Cognified, we organized hackathon. Probably all of you have hackathons in your companies. So we've got eight wonderful hours to create something new to implement or postpone yeah. ideas or simply have a fun. And we've got idea, uh, we choose technology, and we've got eight hours to implement something, something special, something new, uh, change the approach we use in our company. And that day we implemented first line of our integration layer, and we called it, uh, we open source it first, and we called it Notex. Right. And the main idea behind Notex, Notex is extremely simple. We combine the authoring experience from CMS with data which comes from external services. Uh, so we create, finally, unified customer experience. It's a simple, simple page, simple site. Uh, but we combine all those elements together uh, as a component. So let's start with core features. Yeah. Uh, very fast. First, we will start with data ingestion. So we've got response from CMS. Uh, it's a simple static page, uh, but it uh, contains page layout, and it also shapes how our dynamic data will look like. Yes. Then we combine it with the response from, s from service. Uh, by now, we will talk about REST service, uh, so it's simple JSON. When we combine them together, we are able to render the fully dynamic page, which contains both static and dynamic data. Yes, but it's more than this data ingestion. So when we shop online, 
we usually when we want to order, we go through several steps, right? We confirm the or items in the basket, then we sign in or we simply give our address, then we choose the delivery method, and finally we confirm the whole order. Uh, with Notex, we can design this uh, multi-step form in the form of a graph and simply configure the flow uh, between the next steps of a form. Also, we have a nice feature uh, for prototyping, which enables us to start with from the work with a mock, mock data, mock services from the very beginning. Uh, for example, before the final services are ready and uh, switch then very quickly to the production services when they are ready. And the last thing, very important, we know that we cannot foresee every case uh, for each project and uh, no, many, no matter how many lines of code we have and how many design sessions we did, uh, it's simply not possible. And we invested a huge amount of time to make Notex easy to integrate and extend. So we have core features, but all project specific stuff like authentication or database querying, uh, it's very easy to plug in, no matter the technology we create it with, we can very easily plug in it to the system. Okay, so it's, not, it's enough about Notex. Uh, yeah. Let's see what is inside and why it's uh, so fast. Uh, first, we used uh, Vertex It's our first hero. Uh, Vertex is a simple, event-driven, non-blocking application framework, and that's all. And we decided to use it in Notex because it fits our needs. So our, our application is a bunch of separate components which are isolated. And those components have defined contracts which they use to communicate together. Those components in, ver in Vertex are called verticals. Uh, each vertical can contain uh, a lot, one or more handlers which react to some actions from our environment. So we can react to HTTP request, message, I.O. response, and much, much more. Yeah. And uh, now uh, it's time to talk how those components can communicate together. Uh, it's not a simple HTTP. Uh, Vertex provides us something much more. Uh, it is called Event Bus. It's a heart of the system, which allow us to, c to which allow different parts of c application or even different applications to communicate together. Uh, but what if I've got one module which is uh, quite heavy, and I need to, s I need, I, and I've got more CPUs which I can use. Uh, and I want to scale internally in within one server. Uh, and when we've got modules and we integrate with event bus, it's quite easy to deploy more instances of particular module, and now we can scale within one server. But right. it's not enough, of course, because in distributed system we want to scale across different machines. So there is one, one thing which changed the game. It's a uh, vertex event bus is distributed. Uh, so from now, we are able to scale our application across different hosts, and this application works li work like a one organism. Uh, so from now, we are able to send one message from one host to the second, uh, to, to different module, yeah. which exists on different hosts. So what's worth remembering, that even bus is a lightweight messaging system that enables us to scale very easily. Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, Let's take a look at the Notex architecture for a moment. We know the basics of Vertex, so uh, let's look at this, this slide. Uh, as we said before, we, are easy, we can easily integrate with REST services. Uh, and to achieve that, we do not have to implement anything uh, in, in, in Java. Uh, we can configure the, the whole, um, con whole endpoints in, in Notex, and we can use it, and we can render the pages. So it's quite simple. But what if we need to integrate with some other services, like SOAP services, uh, we need to implement some business logic in, in our application. And here, the Vertex power appears, because we are quite easy to implement some business-specific logic, or even some steps in forms, and so much, much more. And we can deploy it uh, uh, to our application, and those modules we will communicate with the core platform using event bus. Uh, so we use this event bus uh, quite often, and it allows us to create something which is what is reusable, 
and extract business logic from this uh, Discord platform. Yeah, I think we need to go deeper and talk about performance. Yeah. So as you can see, we have many events that need to be hand needs to be handled in the system. And most of the v those events are simply data or some IO requests and are asynchronous. So if we create an application that uh, has a pool of threads, let's say a thousand of threads, and each thread will take care of just one message, we will soon notice that uh, the most of the time this thread spends just on waiting for this message response. Yeah. And we need so s another solution here. We need a non-blocking approach. So instead of uh, wasting resources for synchronization and blocking operations, we can provide callbacks. And those callbacks will be triggered once the da data arrives. We name those callbacks handlers in Vertex, and they get messages from something called event loop. And event loop idea is very simple. It's just one thread that spins all around and delivers messages to handlers uh, in that are interested in particular message. Uh, so because of that, we need to remember about a very important rule that we cannot do any blocking operations in sense handlers because we will stop the whole event group. It works on a just a single thread. And just because of that, we do not need to worry about synchronization. And this idea, event loop, is called a reactor pattern, and it's used also in Node.js. But there is a one significant difference between Node.js and vertex threading model. And it's connected with number of cores in modern CPUs. Right? When we run the Node.js uh, engine and it starts the project, uh, the, the application, it doesn't support multi-thread. So we need to run multiple instances of a program to utilize whole power of the CPU, all cores. Vertex gives us that out of the box. So it handles multi-threading for us, and it, uh, we can just focus on business logic, right? So if I run Vertex on this laptop, which has eight cores, we'll have eight event loops. OK, maybe. OK, so it's enough about theory. Let's start some coding. Uh, so we need some case to implement. <coughs> so we want to implement, uh, implement search. But it's not ordinary search, uh, it's smart search. So you can imagine, we've got personalized uh, search results. Uh, to achieve it, we need to call two services. First, we need to call service when, where we get the data about the user. And then we call, for example, Solar or Elasticsearch for the search results. So uh, from now, one, one slide back. Sorry. Please. <laughs> So uh, we can we call uh, two services, and now we combine the response from those services, and we call our algorithm. So uh, the task looks quite simple, but let's see how we will implement it in Vertex. So in Vertex, we use callbacks, uh, handlers, we can call them. So we are able to call some, some abstraction, and then when we get response from this abstraction, we can do some logic. So it's quite simple. We do not wait because we are asynchronous. But uh, there is one thing. We can call one endpoint at, this un at one moment. So we can call, for example, user data service first. Then yeah. when we've got the response from the service, we are able to call search engine. Then when we have two responses, we are able to call our algorithm. So. Yeah, yeah. this is the, the calling the algorithm. So. so this what, what, it's not what I expected from the beginning, because my services are not related to each other. I can call them in the same moment, and I don't, have, I don't want to wait for the first one and then call the second one. Yeah, and there is a name for this problem. Yeah. So it looks like this, yeah? yeah. Ah. We call first service, we call the second service, and we've got responses, and we call our algorithm. Exactly. So there is a name for this problem, and it's called callback hell, right? We have a cascade of asynchronous calls, and because we are in sending handler, we cannot synchronize. So we, can, we have to wait for the next responses. And to just imagine what, can ha what the code will look like if the personalized service requires not two, but three or four services to start. So you know where it's going, right? Yeah. 
Imagine that you need to send it yeah. to your to your colleague to to do the code review. <laughs> <It's coming. laughs> and yeah. we can do better. We can do better with Rx Java. And what Rx Java is, it's a form of uh, dealing with asynchronous data in a fluent way that we know, for example, from uh, Streams API in Java 8, right? And uh, Rx Java comes with observable idea, which is extension of observer pattern. And what is worth to remember, it totally changes our man mindset from how to deal with asynchronous, da asynchronous data to what can I do with asynchronous data. And what can I do is easy because we have a lot of operators like skip, take, map, that uh, helps us to deal with this data in a way we want. So yeah, you can imagine that you rec record the pay, you record some actions, and now you play, you you push the play button. So that's how reactive extensions work. Yeah, and let's see some example now. Okay, uh, one more thing. Just to start using observable, we need to subscribe first. And in subscribe, we can define three callbacks. First callback is on next, which reacts on every event that goes to the stream. <coughs> Second one is on error, which is triggered when anything bad happens and it finishes the processing. And the third one is uncompleted and it's notif it notifies us that all events were handled and there is an end of the, of the stream. So on the first example, we have a stream with, a, with three events and then the stream ends. So our subscribe will be notified three times with on next callback and then one time with on completed. On the second example, we have five messages and the stream ends, but after the second message, there's an error, something goes wrong. So we'll be notified twice by on next callback, then we'll be notified by on error callback, and we'll be not notified by on completed because on error finishes the processing. Yes, so, so that's how we can react to some events from our streams. And yeah. uh, when we subscribe, the code execute. So that, that's how it behaves. Yes, so let's see how the snippet of yeah. smart service so will look like with Rx Java. Yeah, so I will modify the code for a bit and you will do the code review and say what do you think about that. First, I need to define two observable, ob uh, observable objects and uh, those objects uh, tell us that we will call first user data service and search service. When I define them, I can use them. So I can use a zip operator, which tells that I uh, combine responses from those services. So finally, I've got response from one service, response from second service, and I can ca call my algorithm. So, so finally, like I've got what I wanted from the beginning. So I call two services at the same moment, and now I'm able to call uh, my algorithm. Quite simple. Yes. But let's see the code once again and see what happens exactly here. So on the, f on the top, we create two observables, one for user tracking service and the second for search engine, and nothing happens there. It's just declarations. Then we create next observable, and we tell that the very first opera operator on it will be a zip operator, which, sim which simply merges responses from two services. Then the action starts. We subscribe, so we tell that on the callback of subscribe, this subscribe will call personalized service with the combined data. And this zip uh, triggers simultaneous calls to search engine and user tracking. Next, we subscribe to the response of this personalized service just to add the main request with response from the search service. And we have one more thing that about Rx Java that is really cool. It's called marble diagrams. And you can see here a marble di diagram of a zip operator that we just used. So no more boring Java docs. 
we can just look up this marble diagram and see what the operator does. So this zip operator, operator has two input streams. So first stream is shapes, and the second stream is colors. And what does zip operator? It combines them so that we have colored shapes on the output stream. Yeah, and all operators in Rx Java are, uh, are described, we can say, in that way. So uh, in every book, in every documentation, you can yeah. check, the, check those marble diagrams and check what will be your result after you execute your code. Exactly. There is another example. So they are all in the same way. We have an input stream. We have then the operator. It's a flat map. And finally, we have the output stream. Exactly. OK. So it's enough about Vertex and Alex Java. And now it's time uh, to, to show you how it, uh, at how it works. So we decided to, cre to, to start uh, with some live demo. We do it first time publicly. Uh, so uh, you know Murph is low. <laughs> it will work. Uh, and we, uh, on this, Maciej, can you come back for this slide for a moment? From the Yeah, for the demo, demo, demo. part. Yeah, you've got a link here. Uh, and uh, we uh, checked this demo yesterday. And uh, all we mm, show today uh, is, uh, is on GitHub. Uh, so you can check uh, check if we uh, lie or not. Okay, so maybe let's start. Okay. Let's open GitHub and s see what we've got today. Let's go. uh, so for today, uh, we'll start with uh, with some project. We've got project, uh, and our business want us to to implement integration. Uh, it's it's quite simple task, but uh, in reality, it's not so quite simple because uh, this uh, endpoint usually is not ready. Uh, it will be provided by external team, and they will provide it in next month. And we need to connect with the service to today, and uh, allow our UIs to to create some layout, some some uh, some JavaScript code, and so on. So first, we will uh, show you how easy it is to mock uh, our external services and, uh, and use them within our application, uh, within, within our components. Right, so let's start uh, mocking engine. Yes, yeah, so now we start uh, this uh, prototyping module we mentioned at the beginning. Uh, it's, uh, we called it mock server. Uh, and uh, it is responsible for exposing mock data. Uh, so much is. Yeah. L let's so we'll it. start this with uh, this uh, command. Yeah. And the mo this mocking engine, like uh, Notex, is uh, just a simple fat jar with all dependencies inside. And we can start it with one simple command. Yeah, exactly. We do not need an, uh, an application server, it's a simple jar. And uh, when we start this, uh, this module, you can see. But you can you come back to the, yeah, the yeah. console? You can see that we started only one module, which, which is called service mock. It means that we'll accept some requests on particular port, and our mock module, mod, mock module uh, provides us uh, mock data for our application. We can actually enter the, this link. It's on a local host. Do, do you see the address bar and everything here? OK. okay. So. We've so got search results, that's our results connected with books. So it's quite simple. We want to display uh, data, we want, we want to display books on the page, and the data comes from uh, REST service. So the, the task is quite easy. Yeah. So let's, so let's see the page. Let's, let's run first. Notex instance. Yeah, exactly. We need to start our, uh, our Notex instance. So Notex, uh, in Notex we defined a file which contains uh, templates. Uh, those templates will be, it's like CMS. We can have CMS where we connect with, uh, with HTTP port uh, protocol and or we can use uh, simple uh, static files. So in uh, this example, we use static files. They are, and now we can start our server. Yeah, and server is started. From now we can open the books page. Yes, yeah. As you can see, the, there is a bunch of core module started with Notex, and let's open the page. It's here. Oh, of course. Yeah. And something goes wrong. 
Let's see the mock module maybe first. Yeah. As you can, you check if you connected with mock module. Right. Uh, because uh, everything in Notex is about the configuration. We can, uh, that's, that's the power of Notex, because uh, we are able to define different configurations for our mock uh, service and for our real life services. And the one thing you need to change is the configuration, but the code and everything what's inside this jar uh, is, is, is the same. So we do not change the code which is inside. Right. I see the re requests are going here because we have the, the info that the request is working. Let's see once again. Oh, of course. I run the instance with the configuration yeah. you for... Can you can see it yeah. here. Uh, here we've got the, the link to configuration and here I'll we've got standalone. It, it means that we are going to connect to live services. Exactly. Uh, but if we want to connect to mock services, we need to start with, with, different, with, the, with different configuration. It's not standalone, it's mocked. Yeah, it, it just tells us that we should use with mocked yeah. instance, not the you can production ready. Yeah, so now we tell Notex, Okay, we want to play with mock data, so let's uh, use mock endpoint. So yeah. let's refresh the page, and now you can see that we've got some books. Yeah. Uh, those books come from, from mock data, so it's not real search, but we are able to start our development, we are able to start creating components and so on. Uh, by the way, there is a new book created by uh, guys from Vertex, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to, to talk with them, to, to work with them. We've got a lot of questions yeah. to them. They are ready to answer, so be open. And this is the first book of uh, Clement Escoffier. Uh, so, but, okay. So let's, let's go yeah, back to the to next the, uh, demo. To the next step. Now, uh, we are ready to integrate with our, uh, with our uh, real life uh, endpoint. So we'll use, for example, Google API. They've got books, so we can integrate with them, and we can display those books using our, uh, our server. So, so this is the Google API, and as you can see, we queried about books with Java, and it returns about eight or 10 records with books connected to the Java. Okay, yes. so we will start, start the instance again. Yeah, so now we're starting our, our Vertex, our Notex instance uh, with standalone. Uh, configuration. So from now we'll connect to this uh, Google API. So let's start it. Okay. Standalone. And that's right. Open, open this time page. it's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so let's enter the books page once again. Maybe I, I will close. Not other tabs. Okay. So this time we pass the query parameter. We can see some timeouts. I hope not. I hope the Wi-Fi wi wo works okay. Is it working or not? <laughs> ah, it's a good, uh, good question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I see request to the to the Google API, but yeah, something go wrong again. Okay, so Google API said that maybe we're I not able to connect. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should switch to the another Wi-Fi, or we try once again. Maybe let's try let's try once again and. Uh, will move to uh, database because yeah. uh, as as easy as you can connect with end rest endpoints, uh, it doesn't matter if we connect to real uh, rest services or we can connect to the live services. It's the same yeah. because we are connecting to to some kind of endpoint. Uh, by Is the way, working? sorry sorry for the design. We we tried really hard yeah. for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to to integrate some bootstrap, <laughs> but our UI skills are really poor. Okay. 
So the endpoint looks uh, looks quite good. So, yes, so we it can works. see. As you can see, we displayed Java Java books. Let's let's try something different, like you know, Vertex. If it's, if it's not mocked. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's Wi-Fi is quite quite slow, really slow. Yeah. Okay. But we have. But we you have can some. see that it works. Uh, it works really fast when you've got good uh, good connection. Uh, so. Uh, we are we are ready to integrate with REST services very very fast. Yeah, we achieved that without any line of Java code, just but out of out of the box. Yeah, but what we s what we now presented you is quite simple. Yeah, we've got application. It's some kind of application server. We uh, have template. We combine it with REST service. Simple. But what if we will go live and our application is too slow, and we want that our server must be faster. And yeah. uh, let's let's go to our GitHub and see. We've got one instance uh, with some with some modules we deployed, but now we want more power connected with the search. We use Solar or Elasticsearch, so they are quite fast. They are quite easy to scale, but our application could also need to scale with them. Yeah. So uh, we need to scale uh, our uh, integration part uh, also. So uh, from now we can start Vert uh, Noptex, uh, with on two hosts, on the first host, and uh, we can start one module which is connected with the search on the second host. And now they will start Noptex with uh, cluster mode, and we can see how they uh, how it works. Okay, so let's start in a cluster mode now. So this is the very same uh, command we started. What we do? We just pass the cluster flag. Okay. Yeah, exactly. As as you can see in a moment, now in our cluster we've got only one member. So uh, we deployed all our uh, components, and now we are able to call the search. But we've got only one member in our cluster. Yeah. So and let's maybe start the second instance. Yeah. And we like prepared here. second instance where we've got only one module which is connected with search. And this, uh, the second instance will communicate with the first one uh, using event bus. So from now, we've got one server which uh, has all components deployed and it accepts all requests from, from environment. But we've got additional server which is able to uh, add additional power to our, our, uh, our platform. And all those uh, messages are sent uh, using distributed, uh, vertex distributed event bus. By the way, use, we use uh, Hazelcast Cluster Manager by default. Uh, it's pluggable, to, you can switch to other, uh, other uh, cluster uh, managers if you wish. At this, uh, this presentation, we use cluster man uh, Hazelcast. Yeah, and what we can see, we'll see that this uh, search, which works on the instance first and uh, on the second instance, will have some kind of load balancing between those instances. Yes. So let's, let's refresh, the page. refresh the page and see what's, what's going on. Uh, so as you can see, the first request was on the second instance. Yes, so, so on the second instance, we've got only search, uh, search module. And uh, the, we, we had, we've got a request from the to, the, to our Notex instance. And then it is sent across event bus to this, uh, this new host. Uh, so let's do the an another query and we'll see that. Yeah. And by the way, you've got out-of-the-box load balancing. So uh, we've got search module on the first instance, and we've got search module on the second instance. And Vertex provides us load balancing. Uh, so you can imagine how easy it is to scale our application in that way. We do not have to implement additional endpoints, REST APIs. Uh, this microservices world is uh, much, much easier in that way. When we can communicate with something very fast, and we do not have to care about that. We've got only modules and contracts, that's all. Okay. Okay. So but we've got one something more. Uh, we can try to check it. Uh, yeah, what if uh, we've got some, we, we are ready to deploy to the production, and our business com came to us and asked, okay, so we've got something, something very small. Yeah? You need to display a featured, featured box. So it's quite simple. But this, those books are in a database. OK, so it's database. So let us give us some web API, and we will connect 
don't, don't worry. Yeah, but we've got no web API. Okay, so we need to implement some DB abstraction, we need to connect to this, this database, uh, we need to define web API, and then we are able to connect. And with Vertex uh, and with Notex, uh, well, we've got modules, uh, and we, can, we are able to plug in something new. We are able to omit some parts, so we don't need Tomcat, which uh, provides, uh, for example, web API. We can do all this stuff in Notex directly, so... Exactly, so let's start the database first. Yeah, so we implemented a very small module, which is responsible for the connection with database and we put it directly inside a Vertex instance. So it works uh, uh, on the separate uh, instance, so on the separate host, but it will work within, uh, within the cluster. So we've got three instances of Vertex now, which will communicate using event bus with its uh, clustered, uh, this cluster event bus here. So. So let's first maybe check the connection to the database. I will just quickly open yeah. and check if it works now. We prepared the code yesterday, so you can... Yeah, it's it. very poor database. It has two yeah. tables, <laughs> with book, one table with books, um, one book, and yeah. Uh, yeah, a table of authors with just one author. Yes, it's of course example, yeah? so you can imagine that you can implement all your business logic uh, as you wish using Rx extensions, uh, using asynchronous programming, so it will be fast. But additionally, you can uh, deploy it to your, to your environment without affecting the production, so a production can stay live and you can plug in additional features. So maybe let's try to, to run the, f the, the last instance. Yeah, it's starting. Okay, and from now you can see that we've got three members in our cluster, and uh, we see that we deployed additional module which is connected with books. They are coming from database. So now we should be able to display the new page with the books from database. So let's see it, how, how we can achieve it. So we have list of one book and list of one author. Yeah. As you can see, maybe let's add something very quickly. Maybe let's add Geekon. It's nine? Nine, I think, yeah. Yeah, Commit. Okay, let's add it and see, see this on the page. So, yeah, as you can it. see, it's not mock. Uh, we connected to database, it's uh, HSQL for for this this de for this demo but it doesn't matter it can be even oracle or everything you've got and from now you are able to connect different modu modules uh, which you don't care where they ex really exist because it doesn't matter it's not your point to think that it will be on this host or, or another host you can deploy for example two or three instances to use the all cpus and you don't care, uh, in code, you don't care about that. The, in your, your code is quite simple. And you don't have to think about distribution, about uh, where it will be deployed. Finally, of course, on production, you check if it works or, so or not. But when you have to do something, you do not care about that. So maybe let's open IntelliJ and check how this code looks like. Let's see the D DB Boost yeah. adapter. Let's open this DB adapter and see what is inside. We've got some time. We've got six minutes. Do you see the code or I need to make it bigger? Okay. Yeah. So you can see the code. The code is really simple. Uh, yeah, it's a proxy. Let's open the proxy one uh, where we've got a, tr a lot of okay. RX, RX extensions. And here you can see that we, con we are connecting to a database. And uh, we do some, 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 some things with uh, response, and we provide this data from database directly to event bus. So when we call uh, for, the, for the data from our, uh, for our core modules, we provide some, some abstraction and we send it using event bus. Yeah, and as you can see, there are two deprecated methods. We we just upgraded the version of Vertex we used yesterday yeah. because what possibly go, can go wrong. Yeah, Vertex switched to 4.3.1, I think. It's the current version. 
uh, they added uh, some additional features which are connected with Rx Java, uh, yeah. which was refreshed, of, of course. Uh, we use sh uh, singles. Uh, before we've got only observables, now we've got singles. When we do, when we know that we will not uh, work with the a few different events, we'll work if we will work with one event, we can use singles. So Maybe that's, that's I can I can show uh, the configuration mm, configuration and uh, markup very qu quickly. So the markup of the page. This is the interesting part when we have a snippet. And as you can see, there is some dynamic dynamic data uh, here. We use, we use handlebars to ingest the data as a templating engine. And the interesting thing is here that we tell that the data in this snippet will call, come from books listing service. Yeah, it's, this snippet is quite important because you can see that we define some kind of abstraction. We do not define exactly uh, for example, HTTP call to a service. We define that we've got the service, but we do not care in that moment what kind of uh, communication we use. Uh, so now we define uh, that it will be our, let me see, books listing service. Yeah. Yes. And uh, this <coughs> books listing service can be, uh, can be a different module, can be database, can be everything. And uh, in configuration later, you say, okay, this is my abstraction in template, and uh, with this configuration, when I start mocked server, I use this endpoint. When I use production, I use different endpoint. But if I will want to, ch to uh, move to database, uh, I will simply change the configuration which is connected with the endpoint, but the templates stay the same. Yeah, so in this example, we say that we connect to, to the address on event bus, which is Notex adapter service books DB. And this is address of our DB books uh, yeah. uh, module, and we simply pass the query yeah. to that will be executed on the module. Yeah, as and we it fetches all the data. Exactly, as we mentioned at the beginning, we defined some API uh, for you, uh, which can uh, allow, which allows you to uh, extend Notex easily, and we defined some abstractions uh, which uh, allows you to inject something totally new, which is, can be, for example, authentication. It can be DB connection and much, much more. Uh, and uh, we added also abstraction which is connected with those endpoints. So you can easily change uh, the endpoint type, for example, from REST to SOAP very, very easily. So it's a matter of only a, a few lines of code. Yes. Okay, so it's okay. all from our demo. demo. And uh, yeah, as we yeah. Told, told you before, Notex is fully open source. You can see every line of code, of course. Uh, you can check us, add yeah. us some, some code Please review. Give us some feedback. Yeah. Give and us some tips. Yeah, this is all from us. Great. Yeah. Thank you. By, by the way, it's our first presentation about Notex. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we have two more minutes, uh, so we can take one or, or two questions. But there is a catch: there is no microphone, so you have to come back speak to us. Cloud. Come to us and Any questions? Ask. Okay, so the question was how we handle uh, that on the example when we call two services and what happens when one service is not, not responsive, right? So there are two ways we can uh, implement the approach. Uh, it will be project specific and we can implement one approach that the whole page is not responsive. So it's the, the very basic. So if one of the services is not, not responsive, we serve, for example, 503 for the whole page. Or we can implement some logic on this, in, for example, in Rx Java, and fetch some, I don't know, mock data or some information that, because the data for this uh, service is only one component of the page, right? 
so we can say that uh, the data is not available and sorry yeah. this component is not not available if it's uh, for example only some dynamic data in uh, I don't know stock exchange yeah. or something like this. The question maybe was a bit deeper in vertex we've got circuit breaking uh, we can use it from vertex directly and we can implement some actions which will happen uh, when something goes wrong. So it's implemented in Vertex and we can use it. Uh, by the way, Vertex provides also discover, uh, service discovery. Uh, so you can, uh, you can implement your service discovery with Vertex. So uh, those, those two elements are all on our road roadmap so now. Uh, and additional, additionally, yeah. we, uh, we plan to add some metrics when you can mo mo monitor your cluster and you can monitor all events, uh, they are sent across the event bus. Yeah, so is, it, is that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Great, so I think we are out of time, so thank you very much. Thank you.